Hey guys, it's uh, me, Sean. Welcome back to our online video tutorials using Platinum Art Sandbox for our video game design software. Um, this is our third video tutorial, so we're going to be going over entities and sort of how to apply them and put them into your game and be able to change the properties. So if you haven't had a chance yet to check out our other video tutorials like materials, texturing, or modeling, I would definitely check out those first because some of this might not make sense unless you've actually checked out the other videos. So uh, let's get started. So entities can be a lot of different things. Uh, they can encompass uh, jump pads, teleports, platforms, elevators, uh, creatures, lights, all these various different things that we can sort of interact with. Now the first one we want to start off with is going to be a jump pad. And uh, our jump pad, uh, this is actually a castle that I built. And uh, I want, what I want to do is I want to have, my, uh, I want to have the player be able to get to the very top of the, jump, uh, the castle here. And a way to do that is actually use a jump pad. Now a jump pad um, is just what it sounds like. It's basically a little spring that once you touch it, you can change the properties and be able to bounce up in the uh, air. So if you ever played a Mario game, Sonic, uh, they put these into their, their games uh, very often. So uh, let's go ahead and start building one. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually go into edit mode here. And uh, I want to build a, uh, actually I want to create a, uh, just a placeholder texture for right now. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just press F2. Uh, I'm going to bring a texture here. Uh, this one looks pretty good. Okay, so here's my placeholder texture. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a entity. So what I do is press F3. And uh, it brings up this little menu. And I'm going to go to New Entity right here. Okay, so once you press uh, New Entity, uh, by default it always creates a light. And so what you see here uh, for this particular entity is the radius of the light. Uh, if we go a little bit closer, we can see uh, the red, green, and blue values. And uh, if we go ahead and just press E, our entity actually disappears. So when we create an entity, we want to make sure that uh, you have some sort of placeholder texture um, if you're going to be interacting with it. Uh, for example, like a jump pad. Because if we didn't, we would never be able to find it. So as long as you have something there to kind of let the player know, uh, I'll just make the game much easier to find these particular objects. So if you want to take your entity right here, uh, we have sort of a little bounding box, this little box that floats around uh, this particular object. The way we can move it around is uh, we can go ahead and click on this side of the box, and I can just sort of click and drag and move it in these directions. I can also move it up and down and back and forth, so off the X and Y axis. Now if I'm going to move it off the Z axis, I have to go ahead and select on this side of the box. So now when I click this, I can move it up and down. Okay. And uh, if I just want to move it on just only the X and Y, I would just click on the top of the box. I can do that. And there's a couple other things you can do. Um, you can go ahead and if you, as long as you hold it down, you can use your scroll wheel to bring it uh, closer and farther away, just like that. So you just go ahead and left click and use your scroll wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this back in the right spot. So it takes a little bit to get used to the, uh, the movement of moving around entities and map models, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. And it's also good to use the, uh, the guideline right here. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and we want to change this to a jump pad. So what we need to do is make sure that our entity is selected. So I have it selected, and I'm going to go ahead and press F3. Once I press F3, you're going to see all these different properties for a light. That's all great, but we're not using a light right now. We're actually using a jump pad. So we need to go to type. We want to go to a different type of entity. And here's a list of entities that we can put into our uh, game here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead to jump pad. Okay. So now here's my jump pad. So I made a jump pad. Now if I go to game mode, I can hear a sound effect, but nothing's happening. The reason why is I have to change the values of this particular jump pad. You'll notice we have Z, Y, X, and they're all set to zero. So we have to change the properties. So we're going to go ahead and just press F3, and then this will bring up the properties of our entity. Now, uh, what they just incorporated into 2.7.1 is the option to go and create little sliders. Uh, these are off. You can go ahead and turn these off right here by going to miscellaneous. And what you can do is you can actually type in the value number or if you're used to, you know, if you just have to make a quick little change, um, I suggest putting the sliders on. So for example, we want to go, we want to bounce our character up, up in the sky. So what we need to do is we need to change the z-axis. So if I go in and click on this number right here, see our value comes up, and their little arrow pops up. So the higher the number, the higher our character is going to bounce up. If we do a negative number, it's going to push us down. So I'm going to go ahead and just try maybe 90. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and press E. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and walk over to it. And it looks like it's working. Pretty good. Okay. So I can go over to it again if I want to. It looks like I'm stuck on the little wall here, so I have to get a little farther back. There we go. Now, say for example, you want to make your jump pad, but instead of bouncing you up, you want to have it go in a different direction. We can go ahead and just click on our entity and uh, press F3. And I'm going to go ahead and change some of these values. So I want to make sort of a cannon. So I'm going to have it uh, push us off the Y axis and also the Z axis. So it's going to be a sort of an arch. So I'm going to go ahead and test it out. And now see how it just bounced me that way. And the great thing about our entities is that we can go ahead and copy one and uh, we can go ahead and it'll copy all the properties inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. I'm going to press C on my keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the ground here and then press V. So what I just did was just copy and paste a jump pad. So I'm going to put a few of them in here. And I'm going to go ahead and just make another one right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just change the direction. So I'm going to have it bounce that way. And just to make it fun, I'm going to put a bunch of them in here. Let's go a little crazy with it. So what you guys can see here is that I'm going to basically have a room where it's just a bunch of jump pads and I just keep bouncing back and forth. Okay. So there's a lot of creative ways that you can use these jump pads. Uh, if you've ever played uh, a great game, uh, Donkey Kong Country, um, where they sort of used uh, different barrels, and once you went to one barrel, you bounce to the next barrel, to the next barrel, you can do sort of the same technique in here. So I can bounce one jump pad, then I'll make me land right here, and uh, I'll have another jump pad, maybe bounce to the next one, over and over and over. Obviously, I have to test this out. This is going a little too far, <laughs> and I just fell off the edge of my map. But you sort of get the idea. So there's a lot of creative ideas, or creative ways to import these uh, entities into the game and make your game really fun. So that's jump pads. Let's go over another one. Another one is going to be platforms. So for example, I have a lava pit that I built here, and uh, I have a, just a special area that I want to get to at the very end. Now obviously, if I try to jump across, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. So we need sort of a platform to get to the other side. Now, a platform is similar to an elevator, except it just goes back and forth. So let's go ahead and build one. So I'm going to go ahead and press F3. I'm going to go to New Entity. Press F3 again. I'm going to go to Type. I'm going to make a brand new one. And uh, we're going to go ahead and find the platform. Platform, platform, platform. There we go. All right. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and press F3 because I'm going to bring up the properties. Now, there's different options here. One is our direction. This is the direction that uh, my platform is going to move. So I'm going to have it actually move back and forth like this. So I'm just going to move it by 90 degrees. And a little air represents that. Okay. The next one is a map model. So what do we want to assign to this particular uh, platform? What do we want to be able to stand on? A good one to start off with would be uh, number 12. Uh, this is actually a little platform you can stand on. It's actually, it's actually called a jump pad, but don't let that confuse you. It's just a map model that you can stand on. Uh, we have tag, which we'll be getting into uh, a little later. And then we also have speed, how fast we want this platform to move. So I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to about 30 here. I'm going to go ahead and I need to put it in the right position. Actually, I'll just leave it right here. And I'm going to press E one more time to load into the game. And there we go. So now we have this little platform that's moving around. You can stand on it. And it keeps on moving. Now, this... Um, platform will continue to keep moving unless there's a wall or an object that it can bounce off of. Uh, it can be an actual model, uh, it can be an actual uh, geometric uh, uh, with the terrain here, like the castle, or it could be a clip. Okay? Now, it's n not bouncing off anything, it's going to the edge of the map and it gets stuck. So you want to make sure when you go ahead, uh, and actually when you press E, it loads it back into the game from the reset point, that you put it over here where there's going to be a wall. So now if I press E, see it bounces back and it should do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make this a little, uh, I like the speed actually, that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, I copy the values, I'm going to go ahead and put it right here, put a little bit higher, and maybe I'll have it start over here. So it's going two different uh, speeds a little bit. There we go. And maybe I'll make another one. Maybe I'll put it over here. And let's sort of make this interesting. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's go to my map model right here. 
And uh, let's find something fun to stand on top of. Let's see. There we go. This will be interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and move this guy a little bit lower. So now, I'm going to go ahead and just proceed to load all the things in. So now I got two little jump pads to bounce off of, and it looks like I got a horse. So you can pretty much use any sort of map model as a platform, so you can make things very interesting. Oops, let me try that one more time. I don't think the horse is having a good time standing on top of the lava. Alright, let's see if I can jump on him here. Oh, it was close. But anyways, you get an idea of how we can use platforms and put them into the game. Uh, you can have these go in different directions if you want to by having just do this. So now we have a couple various uh, directions going on. And uh, it's just a lot of crazy challenges that you can put into the game when you have them going in different directions. So that's platforms. Elevator is pretty much the same thing, uh, except it's just going to go up and down off the, uh, the z-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and just press F3, new entity, I'm going to go to type, and I'm going to go to elevator. So here's my elevator, and I'm going to go ahead and change this, uh, let's go ahead, let's just do 15. It's a wood pallet, it's a little bit bigger than the, uh, the jump pad that you saw earlier, map model. And I'll change the speed here. And uh, now direction in this case actually means which way do you want the map model to face so if I go ahead and press E here there's the platform or the uh, the elevator and let me just move it a little bit see I just it moved the map model a little bit now this elevator will continue to keep going up unless I put again another wall or I put a clip or something that has it bounce off and let's try that one more time. Looks like I went right through it. Here we go. Okay. And get to the very top. Alright, so now we got a jump pad and an elevator. Pretty much do the same thing. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to build uh, just a little clip here just to have this elevator go back down. So I'm going to go ahead and just push this away here. Push that away. Turn this to a clip. So now when I go to uh, the game mode this elevator should bounce off the clip and go back down. Alright. There you go. Okay. Now let's go over uh, teleports. Teleports are a little fun. Uh, we're going to go ahead and press F3 here. New entity. Type. And let's look for our teleport. So here's our teleport. Now I'm going to go ahead and just put my teleport right here in this little green box. Now when I walk over to it, you notice it's not working. It says right here on the left hand side, it says no teleport destination for tag zero. The reason why is we have to have a destination point. We have to tell this teleport where it wants us to uh, where it wants to send us. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new entity. And we want to look for something called teledest. It's right below teleport. So this is the destination point, the where it's gonna send us to once we go through that teleport. And I'm gonna go ahead and just send it uh, I'm gonna put it over right over by the water here so there you go and see I'm using my guidelines to show where my uh, destination point is so it looks like it's going to land me right in the water here so let's try it out so I'm going to go into my teleport and there we go right in the water now say if we wanted to make uh, two teleports now the great thing about this is if you have one teleport it shows you a little guiding line it shows you exactly where you're going to end up at but when you start adding two, maybe we're going to make a game that's similar to Portal or something. So we're going to have multiple teleports. So I just what I did was I just copied one of the teleports, and it's still sending me to this destination point. So let's make a new destination point. And let's put it right here. So now it still wants to send me over there. So what I need to do is we need to get into something called tags. So if you, want it, if you have two teleports or two different types of entities in your game, and you want them to correspond with each other, you have to have the same tag number. So, if we go to this teleport here, and I change the tag number to 1, and since the teledesk has a tag number of 1, they're going to work together. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this over here. And you can see how I'm using colors to represent where the teleport is going to go to. So obviously this is a good one, because I'm landing in water. This one could be bad, because I could be landing in lava. Right, and luckily I just landed on there, and hey, now I'm on the horse. Awesome. Alright, so that would be teleports. 
Now, there's quite a few other sort of entities that you can get into, um, and each one has sort of its own different values and different properties. Uh, we can get into that a little bit later in the different uh, tutorials, but uh, if you play around with them, once you learn one sort of uh, entity, it's pretty easy to learn other ones. Uh, ones I'll kind of briefly go over. Uh, player start, so if you want to have your character start in a certain part of the game, go ahead and press F3 here, change the direction where he starts off here. Uh, don't worry about team for right now. And if we go ahead and die, uh, it should send us right there. So it looks, yep, looks like it's working. Uh, there's also a respawn point. So, for example, if I died in the lava here, and as long as I hit the respawn point, uh, it'll save my progress throughout the game. So I'm going to go ahead and new entity type. Uh, let's go to uh, respawn points. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little texture to represent uh, where it's at. I'll put it right here. So I'm going to go over walk to it. So you see right here in the left hand side, it's respawn, respawn point set. So now when I die, it sets me right by the respawn point. So there's quite a few entities and uh, a lot of different ways to utilize them and put them into the game. Hopefully you learned uh, just a brief overview of uh, some of them. And uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, check out our website, c3cyberclub.com. Also check out Planet Arts, uh, Sandbox Game Maker. Um, really great stuff on there. So uh, hopefully we'll see you guys again, and uh, keep designing your games. All right, bye-bye.